July 21st, 1892. Dear Martha, once again, trouble has reared its ugly head. Yesterday evening, Daniel and I found a stable for our wagon in Gabriel. I paid the man a little extra to let Ethelbert stay there too. Daniel watered and fed Gabriel while I went to the general store. I bought some meat for Ethel's supper and a big ham bone to last him through the night. We found rooms at Molly Baden's bed and breakfast. Both of us looked forward to sleeping in a real bed for a change. Molly was very nice and told us we were welcome to use her indoor bathroom. An indoor bathroom? Can you imagine? For supper, we went to the Liberty Bell, a restaurant here in Juneau. We were starving and we have a little money left from Miss Melman. I don't know why, but the town of Juneau is filled with people right now and they all seem to want to eat at the Liberty Bell. The restaurant was full and there was a crowd of people sitting and standing outside. Daniel and I put our names in for a table and waited with everyone else. We had to wait almost an hour, but it wasn't too boring because the Liberty Bell had a big fish pond out front with pretty goldfish in it. I wanted you to be there with me to see them. When we finally got to our table, they brought us more food than you could shake a stick at. They brought platters of ribs, corn on the cob, collard greens, swamp cabbage, cinnamon apples, potato salad, sliced tomatoes, sliced pickles, and three kinds of pie. Daniel and I started laughing. With the two of us, it's either feast or famine, as Mama used to say. Remember when she used to say that to us? During the meal, though, a big fight broke out right outside of the restaurant. Two or three men were beating each other up and yelling insults. Suddenly, they came through the door of the restaurant. We all kind of scooted our chairs back and got out of the way. After a few moments, though, the fight broke up and the man left. We went back to our chairs. Daniel thought the fight was great fun and excitement. He kept saying things like, did you see that roundhouse? He took that uppercut like he was made of iron. As for me, I just wanted to eat. And that's what we did until we could hardly move. When I went to pay our bill, I noticed my neck pouch was hanging outside my shirt, not under my shirt where it usually lay covered. I thought, that's odd. I counted out the money we needed for our meal and handed it to the girl who waited our table. As I was putting the neck pouch back, a scary thought occurred to me. I opened the pouch to make sure everything was there. The land deed was gone. I jumped up from my chair and shouted, Daniel, it's gone. The land deed was here and now it's gone. He said, maybe you dropped it on the floor when you took the money out. He helped me search the floor around our table. Folks were beginning to stare and murmur. Daniel faced the restaurant of people and said, has anyone seen a folded paper on the floor? It's very important. Everyone began to look. Began to look. Someone yelled, I'll check outside. Martha, I was so nervous. My palms were sweaty. No one had seen the paper. An older lady called me over to her chair. She motioned for me to lean down. She whispered, there was a man standing behind you just as the fight broke out. I thought that he was odd because he was so close. I happened to glance up and saw him pulling on something that you had around your neck. My heart almost stopped. I said, what did he look like? She said, well, I don't want to be unkind, but his face had a scar. I sunk down to my feet and put my head in my hands. Jimbo Dud has brought the trouble Nayuski warned me about. Martha, what will I do now? Love. Teddy. July 23rd, 1892. Dear Martha, it's tempting not to wish I was back in Mississippi with you, playing, but I keep pressing on. First of all, Daniel was not able to go to the landing office with me. Rats! When we got up this morning, Molly Baden fixed a nice breakfast, but when she was serving us, she forgot she had left the pan of bacon grease on the stove. It caused a small fire in her kitchen, and the fire brigade had to come. She turned to us and said, Please, would you watch my children while I try to deal with this? Without waiting for an answer, she handed us three small children and went back into the house. 
Daniel looked at me, helpless. I said, I'll be all right. Come to the landing office when you can. I didn't want to take the time to harness Gabriel to the wagon, so I ran all the way to the courthouse. The clock on the front of the courthouse said a quarter past nine. I was just sick that I hadn't been there at the stroke of nine. I went into the courthouse, and the same woman who had helped me the day before was there. She said, the land deed office is open, down the hall and to the left. That walk to the land deed office was like walking through quicksand. I opened the door and went in, just as I had feared. There stood Jimbo Dud. He was being helped by the clerk behind the counter. The clerk had spread out an enormous map and was going over it with Jimbo. He said, this would be your 40 acres right here. See, your land borders this spring. That will be vital for irrigation. Jimbo said, where do I sign? The clerk said, you must be in a hurry. Well, Mr. Bodane, I'll get the papers in order and we can. The way Jimbo Dud was standing, it was hard for the man to see me. I shouted to get his attention. Stop! It's a lie! That man is not Mr. Bodane! Jimbo turned around and spoke in a harsh voice. You better get out of here. I warned you about not causing any trouble. Martha, he was so scary, scary I nearly backed down. I had to summon all my courage. I looked him right in the face and said in a loud voice, And I warned you that you can't steal what my pap has worked so hard for. I spoke to the man behind the counter. Mister, you'd be making a big mistake if you turned that land over to this man. He's a liar and a thief. My pap is Dalton Bodane. This man stole his land deed. I was shaking by the time I had finished talking. The clerk behind the counter said, Come forward. I want to see who is talking to me. As I tried to get around Jimbo, he hissed, You're making a big mistake. I walked to the counter. I said, My name is Theodosa Bodane. I came from Mississippi in a covered wagon with my parents, Grace and Dalton Bodane. My little brother Dylan died in the yellow fever epidemic up near Gainesville. I was separated from my parents. I've been keeping this land deed for my pap. This man, Jimbo Dud from Micanopy, stole it because he wants the land for himself. The clerk snatched the land deed off the counter. He said, if this is true, then you could be put in jail for attempting to steal property that doesn't belong to you. This is a matter for the court to decide. His honor will be presiding tomorrow morning in court. We'll just let him settle this matter. Jimbo's face turned as angry red as possible. He said, this is a lie and I'll have none of it. I want my land. The clerk said, I'm afraid it's too late for that. You may have made a false and illegal claim. I'm sure the constable will want you to be his guest at the jailhouse until this matter can be settled tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. If you are proven innocent, all the proper apologies will be made. Jimbo turned to me in rage. Look at the trouble you've gone and made for me. You'll pay for this, and I ain't going to no jailhouse. He turned to leave. The constable stood in the doorway to, with two other men. The constable said, Sir, you can come willingly or unwillingly. The choice is yours. Martha, it is not every day that you get to see a man led off to jail. Love, Teddy. July 24th, 1892. Dear Martha, I bet every time you open one of my letters, you ask yourself, what's next? The saga continues. After the big ruckus with Jimbo Dud at the courthouse, I went to find Daniel because he hadn't shown up yet. They had put out the fire, which didn't do too much damage. When I got there, Molly Baden was just thanking Daniel for watching her children and keeping them safe. I told Daniel all about seeing Jimbo and the fuss he had made. Daniel said, oh man, I missed it. I told him he'd get to see the real excitement tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock in front of the judge. We talked about that, wondering what would happen and if the judge would believe me or Jimbo. 
in the meantime we decided to telegraph miss melman to let her know we had finally arrived in juno and were staying at a nice place i had never sent a telegram gram before so the operator at the telegraph office showed me how to word it you pay by the word so you have to keep your message short my telegram said arrived juno staying molly baden's bread and breakfast court tomorrow at two o'clock about land deed jimbo dud in jail teddy i paid the fee and daniel and i watched the telegraph operator tap out the message it seems a miracle that you can be in one place miles away from someone you want to send a message to and in just a few minutes your message can arrive someplace miles away daniel and i went to the drugstore to have an ice cream soda and afterwards we came back to the telegraph office the operator said you have a telegram daniel and i were thrilled to receive an answer miss melman wrote happy you are safe john mickelson investigating your parents may have a lead cassie melman i felt my heart beating faster and faster i sent another telegram are my parents alive daniel and ethelbert and i walked around the town of juno and fed some ducks down at the pond when we checked later there was another telegram located the larks <clears throat> may have news i felt all fluttery inside i thought of travis lark and what good friends we had become i wondered if his parents had any news of my parents we got a third telegram lark's claim saw dalton bodane in may mickelson telegraphing u.s health office i was getting the hang of this telegraphing i had an idea i asked the operator can i send a telegram to micanope he said of course my telegram was to the postmistress it said did dalton bodane pick up letter left for him theodosa bodane the answer arrived 15 minutes later letter still here my heart sank but one hour later the telegraph operator found us at the liberty bell he said teddy another telegram arrived for you this telegram was from miss melman john received telegram from post office fort pierce bodane family living miss eileen's boarding house i was stunned bodane family did it mean mama and pap did it mean the other bodane family we had met on the wagon train daniel and i stood right outside of miss eileen's boarding house when we were in fort pierce were mama and pap there at the same time i didn't know the answers but i had to take a chance i sent another telegram to miss melman telegraph bodanes come to juno courthouse tomorrow two o'clock emergency martha i can tell you that my knees were knocking when i sent that message daniel said well tomorrow we will know for sure my eyes filled with tears but they weren't tears of sadness they were tears of hope love teddy <laughs>